Medicine Medical Center in Henderson, Nevada. I'm a board certified family physician and we're continuing our series on the book Wheat Belly. The next chapter we're going to discuss is when Wheat Belly makes the argument against wheat as being such a dangerous metabolic disruptor for your body. And the argument is that wheat has a high glycemic index and this high glycemic index raises your blood sugar which raises your level of insulin which then creates the tendency to become fat and diabetic. And this argument is widely made but it's completely wrong and the facts are actually very much the other way. So when we examine the argument in the book what we have to understand is insulin response doesn't just happen when you eat carbohydrate. You get a significant insulin response to many different foods and in fact high protein foods will often create a higher insulin response a significantly higher insulin response than high carbohydrate foods. And we measure this using a concept called the insulin index. And the insulin index of wheat is between, you know, 100 and 140. The insulin index of beef is 1580. The insulin index of cheese is 230. Eggs have an insulin index right around that of wheat. Yet, in the book, we're recommended to eat beef and eggs and cheese as a way to keep our insulin levels low. Well, this makes no sense. And that's why when we look across the world at the groups that eat the most beef and eggs and cheese, we find that those cultures tend to have the very highest rates of diabetes. And when we look at cultures that eat very low levels of those foods and eat starchy carbohydrates, they have very low levels of diabetes and tend to have low circulating insulin levels as well. The book then goes on to talk about how much weight gain is caused by celiac disease and how celiac patients tend to lose weight when they go on a gluten-free diet. But again, this gets the facts exactly the opposite. The majority, by far, of patients who are diagnosed with celiac disease are very ill, they're very slender, and this has been my experience as a doctor, they tend to gain significant amounts of weight when you take them off gluten and put them on a gluten-free diet. The reason for this is their intestines are chronically inflamed. They're very sick and so they have trouble even absorbing enough calories to get through. Their food pretty much rushes through them and they have diarrhea all the time. And when you stop that and when you restore health to the intestines, the intestines can start, start absorbing calories again and you tend to gain weight. But this would make the argument of the book a little weaker so this is not really discussed in the book. Finally, the author brings up the idea of wheat allergy. He says that there are some people who are allergic to wheat and that they shouldn't eat wheat and maybe everybody's wheat allergic. Well, of course, this is a silly argument. There are people who are allergic to cheese, there are people who are allergic to seafood, and there are people even who are allergic to beef. But this doesn't make the author particularly concerned about recommending those foods to people. So the book really fails to establish any kind of credible scientific case for the idea that wheat is really dangerous for people or that it causes belly fat to absorb or that it causes diabetes or obesity. And we're going to discuss more of this as we go through this book at length. Thanks for your time. If you have any questions about our wellness center, please visit us at www.dralanwellness.com.